All right, welcome guys. Today's video, we are at Prasat Nakom Luang. We are uh, kind of a little bit uh, northeast of Ayutthaya. And uh, we came over here to check out a uh, former royal palace. Now, I thought it was Luang meant yellow, but it's Luang, which is a Cambodian word, and it has a, a completely different meaning. And anyway, the, uh, this palace is, uh, goes back to uh, one of the Ayotia kings, uh, King Prasat Tong, I believe. And anyway, this was a royal palace that he built out here. And uh, the way it goes is he sent some delegates to Cambodia, and uh, he ordered them to bring back plans of Angkor Wat. So that was around like the uh, like the 1620s, somewhere in there. So they sent a delegate to Cambodia to gather up the plans, and that's how uh, how this came about. So anyway, we're gonna go and we're gonna walk through this temple and see what it's all about. So uh, join me. Let me show you around. So how cool is that? That is the uh, Prasat Nakom Luang. So anyway, before we go in there, we're gonna go over here and check out this wee hand, and then we'll go into uh, the former palace. So right out by the uh, street is this wee hand. So let's go in here and see what they're praying about. So this wheel here, or this big stone, has like the eight floating Buddha. I guess they're supposed to be like in the uh, eight directions. I can only see a few of them. But it has some really old Buddhas in here. And it has a picture of Rama 9, uh, some of the old Buddha statues, and another one back here. Okay, so here it is. This is a nice view of it. Yeah, this is really, really nice. And it's right next to the Prasart River. And so the story goes is the why, why they use this is uh, they used to go from Ayutthaya up to Saraburi. And they would go up there to see the Buddha footprint, all the royals. And they would send up like a big procession on the barges. And this was about halfway. So they could come here, they could get off the boats and they could rest. And then they would continue on their, uh, their journey to... Uh, see the Buddha footprint. So I guess it's nice to have enough money to uh, build yourself a, just a little shanty out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's good to be the king, right? Now it goes back into the Ayatia days where, I mean, Ayatia was fabulously wealthy. And so the kings, I mean, they just had storerooms full of gold. So they had so much money that they were able to build stuff like this. And it was a way of making merit and there was uh, actually some governing rules for the kings to where they had uh, rules to be, you know, to promote the, the religion and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was a nice thing for the people and it was a good thing for the king. Okay, so I think this closes at six o'clock. There's a sign there in Thai. And it opens at eight o'clock in the morning. So it's got some nice uh, steep stairwell to get up in here. And this opens up into the outer courtyard. So this would have been covered. It's got these uh, piers here. This would have been a covered walkway. And it looks like these were pedestals for some Buddhas here that would have been facing towards the middle. And uh, I don't know if this would have actually uh, had water or actually, I don't know, cause there's a little thing over there. It has this nice archway here. Let's see if there's a Buddha image in here. There's the pedestals for them and just the, just the base. And you can see how it was constructed. So the wood beams are gone from right there. There's just a little bit left and then it's open. And you can see here how it was constructed over the archway. So the wood is completely deteriorated, but they put the wood in there maybe to give it shape and then they could have put the, uh, the archway. Oh, this is really nice. 
and this is just kind of out here in the middle of nowhere there's a it's real really really rural around here there's rice paddies and all of that but you're kind of out away from the town and here you can see the plaster work that would have been done and then up in there they have some jetties let's look at this corner and then we'll go up into the center part you can see the the entrance ways how it was built this is Looks like it's been restored fairly recently. It's in good, good shape. And here would have been some more of the Buddhas and a pedestal here. So it looks like the same for this corner. They have the little alcoves up there. And then they had two, two Buddhas. For the size of these platforms, they might've been standing Buddhas. You can see some birds up there. So this in here is in really bad shape. And then we can see kind of how it looks. Yeah, that is nice. That's cool. That one there's in pretty good shape. Middle part. I wanted to take a look at this one since it's in really good shape. So you can see how they have the wood there and how it's constructed. And that's a little triangle. And then you can see a couple of the partial Buddhas over there on the pedestals. But there's not much and it had about a half inch of plaster on the top of the bricks up there it looks like it's about an inch thick so here's about all that's left of these buddhas so they have the legs a little bit of the torsos on that one yeah this is just this is nice and you can see up into the inside I'm kind of walking all the way around it. I decided to do that. So you can see the corner building here, the archway is gone. And then you can see the, uh, the columns. So it looks like they did them as octagons also, which was the Ayutthaya style. The old island, they kind of seen it as an octagon. So you'll see the columns in a lot of the temples that will be in octagon shapes. Yeah, this is cool. I like this a lot. This is nice. So right here in the middle on the back side, you can see the archway. It's missing the top, but right here they have a nice Buddha. Over on this side, there's not one, but right here is a nice seated Buddha. And you can see, this would be kind of cool to see like whenever the sun is directly overhead. And this is the uh, way looking back at the gate where you come in the front. Looks like they have some uh, tiles over here for some remodel part. Now the castle to me in the middle actually has kind of a Japanese feel, which is kind of different. I don't know if it is or if it's maybe like a European influence, but there were like the Portuguese and the Dutch and everybody were in Ayutthaya at the time of this construction. And uh, the Portuguese were really influential and there was also quite a few Japanese that were here in Ayotia. They were, uh, a lot of the Japanese that went to Ayotia at the time were uh, Christians. They were uh, driven out because of uh, the anti-Christian trend in Japan. And this is looking out of the wall. There's a big hole here. You can see it's just kind of jungle and the Prasat River is not too far from here. But the, uh, the Japanese that were here in Ayotia in this area they had their own settlements and they were, uh, they were mercenaries. They were the samurais and they came here and they were uh, hired soldiers for the uh, Ayotia kings. And there was one that actually uh, ended up becoming like the, uh, like the governor of Nakom Si Tamarat. Yeah, this is nice. So here's a couple of the newer Buddhas that they put here. So they have uh, both here. Now, I don't know if the style, it looks a little different than Ayutthaya. The face is longer and it's not like round. It's not kind of the androgynous look that the Ayutthaya Buddhas have. I don't know if it's more of like a Sukhothai style or a Lotbury style of the Buddhas. If somebody knows, uh, leave me a comment. Tell me what, uh, what style of Buddhas these are in the comments. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I was told that this actually did have water. It was kind of my first impression. So that would have been the... Those little slots right there would have been for the water to flow in. So they would have had this covered 
where you could have crossed it to go up the steps. So let's go into the middle now. So this has a place up here also where it would have had the water. So this would have been kind of like a fountain. Oh, how cool would that have been? So they'd have had water that would have flown all around here and then it would lower down into the lower levels. And it looks like this would have been covered also. And uh, they have some little rocks there. So there have been maybe some Buddhas scattered out here also. And then this is the center courtyard. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. Now this is looking off towards the little wee hand at the front with that round disc. And some of the walls falling down. So it would have been, I don't know, about eight meters tall. The wall here. And then there's the gate. And the gate does feel like it has like a European gate and European influence to it. Yeah, this is cool. I'm surprised they didn't have uh, like Naga or something here as the, the stairs going up. But it kind of looks like it, except for the head right here. This is different than what a Naga would have been. And there's the steps to go inside and the wall has some like little balconies and stuff. All right, let's go up into this part now. Okay, so around the this courtyard here, you can see how that old part would have been. So the old part would have probably been covered like this with the tile roof. And then they would have had the seated Buddha all around. So three tiers of that, wow. And then the center part. Yeah, this is nice. They have the rats here. So they have a Hindu Ganesh. So the rats that you can whisper in their ear. And then they have uh, like a little bell and more Sita Buddha all around. Let's look inside this central part. Okay, so this is inside that center building. And you can see that is a Buddha footprint inside of a giant Buddha footprint. And the Thais have came here and they've thrown money and some ping pong balls for whatever reason. They must buy the ping pong balls and then they uh, can toss them in the, that little basket or that little tin cup in the middle. And if they make it, it's lucky or whatever. We have some more of the Buddhas all around. And look at the size of that lizard up there on the roof. Wow, it's a big old guy. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. A couple more of the Buddhas. And then here's a picture of uh, Rama 9 when he came here. You can see the Buddha footprint in front of him. And then these uh, Buddha images here. Okay, yeah, this is nice. Let's go out and look around uh, the outside of this a little bit more. Okay, so here's a little jetty up top. And then inside here is a Buddha. So this is mixed style up here. This has uh, Chinese Buddhas. It has the Hindu Ganesh. It has the Thai Buddhas. And over there is another one of those jetties. And then you can see all these Buddhas that are just ringing the, the courtyard. That one's pretty cool with the white eyes. And they have this white one here that's just seated. And it has the string that goes around so if they do any ceremonies. And they're all, all the Buddhas are tied together. Yeah, this is nice. So the other lower part would have had this wood just like this. So being the tropics with termites and stuff, the termites get these, uh, they eat those and cause those things to fall apart pretty quick. And then you can see the little slits here. So here's the little balcony. So you'd have been able to walk around it and you could uh, look around at the horizon. So the lower levels would have been covered. So this would have had a roof. Would have had a roof down there also. Yeah, this would have been spectacular when it was nice, when it was new. 
it would have been all white and uh, the center part would have been uh, yellow. Okay, so the corners, you can see they have the uh, little Sri Lankan style jetty on the top also. And then they have a little room built and they have uh, two of the Buddhas that are facing inward. And that's really a nice shape. And then this looks off into the courtyard. So they have a bell here and then you can see that center that has the, uh, the two Buddha footprint. And then some more of the Buddha facing the center courtyard here also. Yeah, this is really nice. Okay, so I actually looked at this Buddha footprint a little bit closer. There's actually four footprints here. You see the small one, and that's inside of one. And then here's a third footprint, and that's all inside of a fourth Buddha footprint. Now with it, there's all kinds of little symbols in it that means uh, a lot to them. All the little symbols on the on the bottom of the foot, the way the little swirls go, all of that has specific meanings. All right, guys. So that finishes up our video here at Prasat Nakom Luang. This is really nice. I really enjoy uh, this place. It's fantastic. It's uh, too bad it's not all the way in its original condition, but what you see is still pretty good. I mean, it's better than a lot of the ruins around Ayutthaya, and uh, it's definitely worth a stop. Admission is free. Just get out here, and you can come in and see it, and uh, definitely worth a little bit of your time. So uh, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you click like and uh, share it with your friends if you would like. Subscribe to my channel. The subscriptions do me the most good. That's what I need right now. So subscribe just takes a second. You're also notified when I make a new video. I post a lot of content. And if you like these uh, this type of videos where you just go and you see what I see, I don't do anything really fancy. I just kind of show you what it looks like and tell you what I know about it. And uh, if you like that kind of video, definitely subscribe and you'll be notified when I do another video. So if you want to know something more, or if you've been here, or if you want me to go do another video, leave me a comment down below, and I'll do my best whenever I have time to go make a video. And uh, I always want to know what people think and what they want to see. That helps. And uh, as always, guys, remember, life is a journey. So from Prasat Nakom Luang, enjoy. Until next time.